root locus is nothing but locus of roots of characteristic equation as k is varied from 0 to infinity. This root locus is used to find out the stability of the system and it is a graphical approach. It is a graphical approach. So, the name itself it is very clear that it is a locus of roots and to get this locus you need to vary some parameter. So, locus of roots of characteristic equation as gain k is varied from 0 to infinity. Here k is the gain, gain of the system. So, when you vary k, how the locus is changing and then the variation of k is from 0 to infinity. The range of k is between 0 to infinity. So, the advantages of root locus or what is the purpose of root locus? As I mentioned, it is to know the stability of the system to find out the stability of closed loop control system and to find out the range of k the range of k for stability. So, it may not be always that system may not be stable for all the values of k from 0 to infinity. In such cases, what is the range of k for system to be stable? Then find out the value of k from the root locus for marginal stability value of k for marginal stability in the sense critically stable condition. And you can also find out the undamped natural frequency of the system from the root locus. And most important is relative stability. Relative stability can be determined from the root locus and the meaning of relative stability is if there are poles in the S plane then how close or how far those poles to the imaginary axis. So, if the poles are very close to the j omega axis we say that system is relatively less stable and if they are far from the imaginary axis we say that system is relatively more stable compared to the poles which are near to the j omega axis. So, that information also can be known from the root locus the relative stability. Let us consider one simple problem on root locus g of s is given by k by s. It is a simple system and you are asked to draw the root locus. So, as I indicated that root locus is locus of roots of characteristic equation. So, that characteristic equation is 1 plus g of s equal to 0 that is 1 plus k by s equal to 0 this is s plus k equal to 0. Now, the root or the pole s is equal to minus k. So, this is the characteristic equation and the roots of that characteristic equation as k varied from 0 to infinity is a root locus. This is a characteristic equation and the roots of this characteristic equation how it varies as you vary k from 0 to infinity need to be seen. So, you can have the value of k here 
then the location of the pole is at s is equal to minus k. So, according to the definition of root locus, you can vary the value of k from 0 up to infinity. So, when k equal to 0, the pole is at 0. That means, if you see the root locus that is drawn in the S plane, the pole is located at k equal to 0 at origin. So, the value of k here is 0, gain constant. Now, when you put value of k equal to 1, then S is equal to minus 1. The meaning of that, this pole starts moving, starts moving towards left of the real axis. This is real axis sigma and this is j omega. So, this k starts moving towards left when k equal to 1, the root is at minus 1. Now, when k is 2, the root is at minus 2. That way, it starts moving as you increase k up to infinity, then s is equal to minus infinity. So, this pole starts moving along this axis towards minus infinity. So, the root locus is this. The root locus is a locus of roots as you increase the value of k 0 to infinity. Problem 2, g of s is given by k s square and draw the root locus. So, the characteristic equation is 1 plus g of s equal to 0, that means 1 plus k by s square equal to 0, s square plus k equal to 0, then s is equal to plus or minus j root k. So, there are two roots and as you change the value of k between 0 and infinity, how these roots will move in the S plane is the root locus. So, let us have the value of k again and the root uh, is located one at plus j root k, the other one is minus j root k. So, if you start again putting the value of k from 0, 1, 10 and so on up to infinity. So, this will be 0 when k is equal to 0, then when you put 1, then plus or minus j root 1, then plus or minus j root 10 and then it goes plus or minus j infinity. So, when k equal to 0, both the roots of characteristic equation are at origin only. As you increase the k from 0 to 1 and then 10, this one pole starts moving towards plus j omega axis and the second root will move along minus j omega axis. So, when the value of k is 1, the pole is here, one pole moves in this direction, the other pole will move downward, it is at minus j root 1. So, this way, one pole move along this axis up to j infinity and another pole will move along this minus j infinity. So, the root locus of this particular problem has two branches one branch moves along plus j omega axis and the second branch moves along minus j omega axis is the root locus of this particular problem. Problem 3, suppose g of s is equal to k by s cube now, order is increased now to 3. Draw the root locus, then the characteristic equation of this system 
is uh, 1 plus k by s q s q plus k equal to 0. Now, how to get the 3 roots for different values of k? So, up to second order it is ok, but uh, as the order increases by 3 and 4, then very difficult to, to draw the root locus. In the conventional method, in the conventional procedure, drawing root locus for such a system is very difficult. So, the engineer Ivan, he has developed some conditions, Ivan's conditions to draw the root locus for any complicated system, whatever may be the order, but if a system has several poles and zeros, conventional method has its own drawbacks. If the order is beyond 3, very difficult to draw the root locus. So, Ivan's conditions are 2. One is magnitude condition. And the second one is angle condition. So, to draw the root locus in a simple way, he has developed two conditions, magnitude condition and angle condition. As you know very well, that characteristic equation is very important in finding the stability. We have seen in RH stability criteria, using the characteristic equation, how to find the stability. That was algebraic approach. Now, same characteristic equation is used even in the root locus to find the stability of the system, but here it is a graphical approach. So, what is magnitude condition and what is angle condition? To have this, we need to have a characteristic equation. It is 1 plus g of s into h of s equal to 0. If it is a unity feedback control system, then h of s is equal to 1. So, this g of s into h of s equal to minus 1. This is also written as minus 1 plus j 0. So, the magnitude condition, magnitude condition means the magnitude of g of s into h of s equal to 1 and the angle condition is nothing but angle contribution of g of s into h of s is equal to 180 into 2 q plus 1, where q is equal to number of root locus branches depending on the problem, it is 0, 1, 2, etcetera. So, any point when you draw root locus, any point to lie on root locus, it has to satisfy magnitude condition and angle condition. So, based on this, there are certain rules developed by events which will help us to draw the root locus easily and then find the stability of the system. As I indicated, root locus purpose is not only to find the stability, but also to find the value of k for marginal stability, finding out undamped natural frequency and finding out the value of gain for different values of damping ratio and also relative stability. So, we will see that what exactly is the magnitude condition and angle condition applied to any problem or any system uh, we will discuss. Let us see the rules to construct the root locus according to Ivan's uh, conditions. So, before actually going to the rules, uh, we must know that say g of s into h of s is a open loop transfer function. This is equal to k into s plus z 1 into s plus z 2 and so on by s plus p 1 into s plus p 2 and so on. As you know that z 1, z 2 and so on are zeros of open loop transfer function and p 1, p 2 and so on 
they are known as poles of open loop transfer function. Now, as I indicated, root locus is locus of roots of characteristic equation. So, I must add 1 to this 1 plus g of s into h of s. So, when I add 1 to this 1 plus this entire equation, by s plus p 1, s plus p 2 and so on. Now, it becomes s plus p 1 into s plus p 2 and so on plus k into s plus z 1 into s plus z 2 and so on is equal to 0. So, this is known as the characteristic equation. Now, as I said, the value of k should be varied from 0 to infinity that is nothing but root locus. So, when you when k is 0, when k is 0, then what happens to this equation? This equation will have only poles. That means, when k is 0, I can say that the roots of the roots of characteristic equation is nothing but poles of open loop transfer function that is p 1, p 2 etcetera poles of open loop transfer function. Now, when k is equal to infinity another extreme another extreme when k equal to infinity substitute here then the roots of characteristic equation is nothing but zeros of open loop transfer function. So, the meaning of that the start of the root locus when k equal to 0 it starts from open loop transfer function and the another extreme of the k at infinity then that is the end of the root locus. So, I can say that the root locus root locus starts from a open loop pole. The root locus starts from open loop pole where k equal to 0 and the root locus ends the root locus ends at open loop 0 where k is equal to infinity. So, the root locus starts from a pole open loop pole and terminates at open loop 0 as you increase k from 0 to infinity. So, for intermediate values of k, for intermediate values of k, I can say that the characteristic equation becomes s plus p 1 dash, s plus p 2 dash and so on. This is for the k between 0 and infinity excluding 0 and infinity. So, s plus p 1 and all equal to 0 where p 1 dash, p 2 dash etcetera are the closed loop poles or roots of characteristic equation. So, this p 1 dash, p 2 dash equal to p 1, p 2 etcetera when k equal to 0 and this p 1 dash, p 2 dash etcetera equal to z 1, z 2 etcetera at k equal to infinity. So, this is important to know that root locus starts from a pole of open loop system and terminates at 0 of the open loop system. The problem the g of s of a system is given by k into s plus 1 by s plus 10. Then find out the root locus for this system. So, you can look at the diagram that this block is uh, g of s it is a unity feedback control system h of s is equal to 1. So, the characteristic equation is required to draw the root locus for this system. So, as you know 1 plus g of s equal to 0 is the characteristic equation. So, it is 1 plus k into s plus 1 by s plus 10 equal to 0. So, s plus 10 plus k 
into s plus 1 equal to 0. So, k is equal to minus of s plus 10 by s plus 1. So, the value of k is given by minus of s plus 10 by s plus 1. I want to see how this value changes for different values of k. So, I just put k here and the other one is minus of s plus 10 by s plus 1. So, when you have k equal to 0, then 1, then 2, 3, 4 and so on up to infinity, then when k equal to 0, the value is minus 10. When it is k equal to 1, then it becomes minus 11 by 2 and when k equal to 2, it is minus 4 and when k equal to 3, you have minus 13 by 4 and then minus 14 by 5. The value of this particular one will become minus 1. So, that means in S plane, the pole is located at minus 10 and the value of k is equal to 0 and there is a 0 that is located at minus 1. So, the value of k here is infinity. So, in between as you increase the value of k from 0 towards 1, 2, 3, 4 and then up to infinity, this is the path traced by the roots as you increase the value of k from 0 to infinity. So, I can say that this is the root locus and it is very clear that root locus starts from a pole, open loop pole which is located at s equal to minus 10 and terminates at 0 and the value of k is infinity. So, this is the path, this is the path as the value of k increases from 0 to infinity. The characteristic equation of a feedback control system is 0. This is in negative feedback control system. So, from this you get g of s into h of s equal to minus 1. Then the magnitude should be equal to 1 and angle should be odd multiples of 180 degrees that means 1, 3, 5 and so on. 180 for negative feedback control system. So, the same g of s into h of s can be represented by minus 1 plus j 0 and the angle criteria that for negative feedback control system is odd multiples of 180 degrees means 1, 3, 5 and so on and this is 180 into 2 q plus 1. If it is a positive feedback control system, positive feedback control system, then the g of s into h of s equal to 1. That means, it is equal to 1 plus j 0. So, this is for negative feedback, this is for positive feedback control system. So, the plus 1, 1 plus j 0 is the point operating point for positive feedback and angles are here 0 degrees, 0 degrees and even number, even number or even multiples of angles will be there for positive feedback. But in our control system, our concentration is on negative feedback control system and we draw the root locus. If you want to draw the root locus for this positive feedback system, it is just reverse of this. So, this is actually called inverse root locus and the actual root locus we draw here, we vary the value of k from 0 to infinity, but for inverse root locus 
the value of k is from minus infinity to 0. So, our focus is on root locus because it is for negative feedback control system and using magnitude and angle conditions.